All right, so in this video, we're gonna talk about Ray Dalio's all-weather portfolio in retirement and uh, yeah, basically see if it's a good idea. So when it comes to the foundation of Ray Dalio's portfolio, you're gonna be invested in 30% stocks, 55% income, and 15% commodities. Now, if uh, we were to just kind of gather these in just a stock and fixed income, I would maybe consider gold a fixed income investment and your commodities index a, uh, you know, a stock index. So really it's kind of like a 37.5 to 62.5 fixed income investment. So when Ray Dalio builds his all weather portfolio, we're going to use VTI for 30%. This is Vanguard's total stock market. We're going to use TLT for 40%. This is the iShares 20 plus year treasury bond. We're going to use a 15% weighting in IEI. This is iShares three, one set or three to seven year treasury bond. We're going to use a seven and a half percent in gold and the commodity, um, fund. So I just want to quickly talk about the, uh, commodity fund. No one really, uh, talks about these investments and, I would consider maybe this a higher risk investment and maybe something to avoid. We'll look at the performance in just a sec, but basically it's a way to conveni conveniently access energy, industrial, precious metals, agriculture, and livestock markets. So basically it's more invested in investing in the actual product itself than a company. So if we scroll down, we see it's uh, down quite a bit on the year and has a negative 10 year number. So something, uh, you know, I would just say maybe avoid, but what we're learning today, this is kind of like a part two from the last video with Warren Buffett is, uh, you know, let's take some of the good strat parts of the strategies these investors use. And why would maybe consider Ray Dalio's a portfolio in retirement better advice um he runs a financial advising practice like he he runs a hedge fund now his clients have millions if not billions of dollars each so ray's advice can't really be taken face value for the average investor in my opinion now we can look at their uh, 13f here and i just wanted to point this out like ray's buying etfs um, look at all these BlackRock iShares ETFs, and you can, uh, these numbers right here, the 46428722, that's a QCIP. So if you can't figure out exactly what it's invested in, you can normally just Google QCIP, and I'll, I'll show you that in a second. So this core S&P 500 ETF by iShares, I mean, that's got to be the IVV. Um, let's look a little further. There's probably some State Street. There we are, SPTR. So here's your GLD. I mean, right in the Ray Dalio All Weather Portfolio. There's your Gold Trust. And um, I just took that QCIP there and popped it in, and there you go. You can just see there's your Gold Shares GLD. And there's probably a little bit of Vanguard in here as well. Um, yeah, Vanguard International and Vanguard uh, Developed Market here. So, and that looks like emerging markets. So, yeah, basically, Ray's using ETFs for a good foundation of his portfolio as well. I mean, you can see I scrolled by probably hundreds of uh, individual companies. But, yeah, even the pros use ETFs is uh, kind of the moral of the story here. So... We're going to take a look at Warren Buffett's portfolio versus Ray Dalio's versus maybe a mix. Now, I didn't really mention this in the last video, your 90-10 split. I mean, that's a great way to save for retirement. But this video is, uh, in the last video with Warren Buffett, it's about how you're investing in retirement. Um, you know, so many advisors can't even get you to the top of the mountain and I'm helping you get down today. I mean, this is uh, complicated stuff. So we're going to use uh, IVV and Shy again for Warren Buffett. And when we uh, actually use the same, you know, ETFs that are mentioned in this uh, lazy portfolio link, 
It's gonna look like 40% TLT. Now I had to put 8% in gold. There's no uh, decimals here. And IEI has 15 and GSG, that's your commodity. And VTI, that's your total stock market. So when I blend these strategies together, I like the S&P 500 more than the total market. And, you know, it seems Ray likes to split up his fixed income. Um, so we're going to take a little bit of short term, a little bit of long term, a little bit of gold, and a little bit of midterm for a 60-40 split. So again, um, yeah, Warren Buffett's is a very high risk. This third portfolio would be your second highest risk. And Ray Dalio's I would consider the lowest risk um, portfolio. And if I were to invest in Ray Dalio's portfolio, I mean, there's nothing wrong with it if you want to copycat it. But essentially, it's a little bit low risk and a portfolio I wouldn't consider using until you're about 70. Um, yeah, basically, it's, uh, you know, not very volatile, as we'll see. So let's analyze these portfolios. Doing the same thing. Got my million bucks. I'm withdrawing six grand a month. We're using this money in retirement. How do we actually use our investments we've been saving for all these years in retirement? I'm gonna show you. So let's scroll down a little bit here. And uh, so again, Warren Buffett's portfolio one started off with a million dollars and we are you know, 15 years into retirement. Warren Buffett still got four hundred fifty thousand dollars or almost four hundred fifty one Ray Dalio's portfolio three hundred almost fifty thousand and using a blend of these strategies we actually have half a million so when we look at the standard deviation this is how volatile Warren Buffett's portfolio it's the riskiest Ray Dalio's is the least risky, 8% standard deviation. So you can maybe see why, you know, I say, hey, this might be a good idea after you're 70 years old. And making a basic uh, industry standard 60-40 portfolio, we have a standard deviation of less than 10. So great numbers here. When we look at the best years, I mean, Warren Buffett's supposed to win. You're 90% invested in stocks. This is supposed to win. When we look at the worst year, it has the worst year. It is supposed to lose. Now I do want to mention uh, this 60-40 portfolio had almost a good a worst year as Ray Dalio's with a higher risk tolerance. So using a blend of Warren Buffett and Ray Dalio's strategy, I mean, we're, we're building a great portfolio right now. Just a simple five fund portfolio. And uh, for your max drawdown, again, uh, Warren Buffett's going to lose. Your commodity had the least amount of max drawdown. Um, Ray Dalio's all-weather portfolio. So why people might want to gravitate to that after 70. It's basically just in the, let's say, 20 to 30 years of your retirement using your investments, the stock market is bound to have at least one large crash. We're talking about a 20 to a 40% drop. How are you going to handle that? the first year into retirement. And that's why I love this uh, you know, graphic right here. We're investing our money as of January 1st, 2008, right before the crash. Warren Buffett's dropped so much. Basically, you lost half your money. You took a bit of income out, but you lost, you have half your money after the first year. Are you telling me you're going to stick through your retirement with a 90-10% split? I hate to say it, you kind of have to at this point, and you have to almost go 100% stocks. You lost so much so quick that you need to be a higher risk tolerance to you know, make sure your retirement's going to cover. And at that point, once you've hit that number, you know your target number, okay, I want to grow my money back to 700000 before I reduce the risk tolerance. Um, you have to set these goal posts. You, you can't keep moving them. Okay, so when you look at uh, Ray Dalio's you know, retirement portfolio in red, it's kind of like a slow down the mountain. I can totally see someone you know, definitely being comfortable using this strategy in the last you know, 10 to 15 years of their retirement. 
Like, you, you can't really jump out of your chair with something like this. And the third portfolio I built is kind of is in gold. Basically, the, the portfolio was almost flat for about uh, 10 years because we're just pulling out a modest income. We're, we're growing our money a little bit. And uh, yeah, you still have over half a million. Let's say you retired the January of 2008. You have half your money halfway through your retirement. And we're adjusting for inflation. We're taking out a little more money bit by bit every year. So if that doesn't give you a little bit of confidence that, uh, you know, meshing these two brilliant investor strategies together um, can, can make the average investor a great portfolio for retirement, um, that's what this video is for, is to show you, okay, how do we get down the mountain in retirement? It's not perfect. It's not pretty. And I would say... Building a portfolio with a lower standard deviation than 10% in retirement is probably in your best interest. That's going to give you the least amount of knee-jerk reaction pulling your money out and into a safer investment for an extended period of time. Alright, hope you learned something. Take care, guys.